The Big Al Podcast with your host, Al Bishop, unfiltered and uncut. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. I'm joined today via Skype uh, by Stuart Austin, all the way from the UK. Uh, welcome to the show, bro, and thanks very much for your time. Thanks for having me, Al. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be on. Thank you, man. Um, obviously, we uh, as uh, South African MMA fans got to see you in your last outing, um, but I thought maybe if we can just get a little insight into how your whole MMA journey started, just for the fans to get to know you a little bit better. Yeah, sure. Um, when I was 16 or 17, um, me or uh, well, my best friend uh, started um, uh, show, had some DVDs, some UFC DVDs. We watched them, and I just thought it was really cool. Obviously, I thought it was like pretty pretty wild. Um, and then from there, I one of his friends had been doing some grappling, and some old um, submission wrestling, and jiu-jitsu. And we went to a competition. I think the next one we went to, I ended up just jumping in, and I won a couple of matches and lost. I think in like the semi-finals or something. Um, and then uh, yeah, it kind of sort of fired my interest a little bit there, and I sort of kept dipping my toe in the water. Um, and th- eventually, I kind of because I was still competing in judo at the time, um, I kind of just became a bit bored with judo. It's just something I'd done um, predominantly because. You know, it's what I'd done for a long time, and I was good at it. And I eventually just wanted a fresh start, and and MMA slowly became that sort of fresh start for me. Okay. Um. So judo is something you you've done for quite some time, then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did it from when I was six to when I was well. I stopped competing properly when I was about twenty. Um, I did a couple of competitions after that, but nothing, and I didn't really take it as seriously then. Okay. Um. One of the next things I wanted to try and piece together was uh, what was the heavyweight scenario. Um, you, you're obviously a, a, a big guy, but is is heavyweight a, a natural fighting weight for you? Um, realistically, like I've had, I have had most of my career at heavyweight, um, but it was always an effort to to kind of maintain my weight. For me, like it was a battle to keep up to weight. Um, and to stay at 108, 109 kilos was, you know, it was almost a, like a big effort for me. Sure. Um, and like I, I'd always find come fight week, I'd lose so much weight. You know, I, I don't know why I used to lose three or four kilos fight week. I think through nerves and sort of your metabolism going through the roof and stuff. And I, I really, really struggled to keep, keep high enough. But at the same time, I've never, ever, I've never felt anyone be like, I've never been physically manhandled. No heavyweight's ever been too strong, um, you know, or, or too big for me to not take down or throw. So it was never really a problem. Um, but when I finally did move and have have my first light heavyweight fight, it just seemed like, I'll be honest, it was just kind of easy. I was just, it, it felt much, much easier. But yeah, it felt, <laughs> it felt more it natural sort of perhaps, sense. yeah. Yeah, it felt it just felt easier. And th- I mean, that's the whole point of fighting a smaller weight, isn't it? It's, it's sure. easier than fighting the bigger guys. Sure. Um, so y- your first assignment, yeah, was was at a, a heavyweight. How, how, what was the decision behind that? Why did you take a fight at heavyweight? Uh, at the time, basically, I, I'd had over, I mean, probably around 10, 11 um, light heavyweights turn me down. Okay. Um, and I'd, I'd previously spoken to Graham before. Um, we'd, we'd spoken, I don't know, I th- it might have been six months prior to that. You know, we'd had a, had a chat. Um, and he sort of uh, presented the matchup for me. said, like, you know, I, I think I, I can't know if I messaged him first or he messaged me. Um, and he just asked about bringing me in. And I was, I was super keen. I sort of told him that, you know, I was more interested in light heavyweight rather than heavyweight. And he said, okay, okay that, that's fine. But, you know, Right now, I've got heavyweight available, and I said, "Yes, let's do it. Let's do it." You know, I'm, I'm a, I prefer to say yes. You know. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Um, obviously, your first assignment was was not an easy one against a a hardy boxing veteran in, in Elvis Moyer. Um, you managed to to, to get a win. I, I I must be honest. I was massively impressed. I I kind of felt when I first look at you, you looked 
quite, uh, li- like we discussed your weight class, you looked quite shy for a heavyweight. Um, and that was going to be very interesting to see how it all played out. And I mean, you you, you look great and, and, and you really stuck it to a guy who's who's been around a long time and really come a long way. And he's, the way I see Elvis Moyo is, is, is the gatekeeper to the heavyweight division, you know. Um, so it was massively impressive. What did you... What did you feel like after that? I mean, coming into foreign territory, into hostile territory, traveling and fighting in a big organization for the first time. What did that win against Elvis Moyo do for you, like confidence-wise and, and, and for your career? Uh, to be honest, um, like Elvis, it, I mean, I found it a frustrating fight because I hurt myself quite early on, so sure. I really wasn't able to like show what went show. I wanted to get him out of there. I wanted to, you know, put on a bit of a, put on a bit of a show display, you know, a bit of my stand up, bit of my grappling, show my wrestling. I wanted to do a bit of everything, get a finish, you know, kind of wrap it up neatly. But, you know, getting injured, you know, sometimes you have to do what you got to do. You know, you can't always, you know, do everything you want to do. And sometimes you just got to get the win, which is kind of what I did. I, I, I shut him down, controlled the fight pretty much the entire match. Um, and uh, I mean, it's nice. Like, it's nice to know I can still fight with you know legit heavyweights. Sure. But at the same time, realistically, I don't see that it moving me that far forwards uh, in terms of where I want to go. You know, I want to be a top light heavyweight, and fighting more heavyweight doesn't you know doesn't move me towards being a top light heavyweight. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Just looking through your career, you you had a fight against Mark Goodbeer. Uh, I think that was in 2016, who yeah. who went on to the UFC from there. Um, th- that was one of very few losses for you. D- do you feel, had you won against Mark Goodbeer, that maybe the UFC would have been the next destination for you? Um, I, I don't know. Like, there's, to my mind, there's no point speculating. You know, we had sure. a back and forth fight. I think if you watch the fight, you'd see I was I was possibly ahead on the scorecards. But at the end of the day, Mark won. You know, he, he's the guy who had his hand raised at the end. He beat me. You know, there's no arguing with with how he beat me. Um, so there's no. I, I'm not stressing about that. You know, my I'm, I'm I can sell myself one fight at a time. Um, there's no point crying over spilled milk. You know, it's yeah. it's done. Um, maybe I would have. Maybe I wouldn't. Maybe I'd be two fights down the line and then gone maybe I wouldn't you know like uh, some of it is you know does your face fit at the time are you in the right place at the right time <clears throat> and it was Mark not me and I you know like that is what it is sure 100% man and and, and uh, luckily for us either way we, we get to witness you in the EFC which is great for us as uh, MMA fans in South Africa um, what was your first outing in South Africa like what what was it like was it the f- you, you know uh, coming to South Africa strange lands if you're from the UK you know um, and, and, and having to fight in this massive organization what, what was all of that like oh, I enjoyed it I enjoyed it um, at the time because obviously it was your winter and it was yeah. our summer sure so the weather <clears throat> that was quite a nice sort of an easing easing into it because I wasn't coming out uh, into extreme heat you know the, I think it was actually cooler than in the UK, it was hotter, sure. um, so that was quite pleasant. Um, obviously, uh, around Joburg, there's a bit of an altitude thing, um, so that took a little bit of adjustments. But you know, that's why we came out early, so your body can adapt to it. Um, but in, t- in terms of the people, I was really impressed. You know, I was I was really happy. Like you know, I, like South African people were so friendly, so welcoming. Everyone at the hotel was really friendly, welcoming. People, as soon as you you say the words EFC, people are interested, you know, people are watching it, which is, like, completely different to MMA, you know, if I, in terms of, in the UK, if you say to someone you do MMA, you know, you've got to say, you've got to, there needs further explanation, you need to say, you know, perhaps Conor McGregor or, you know, somebody else, you know, you need (laughs) to kind of elaborate and explain a bit more about it still, depending on who you're talking to, but, um, you know, it's quite nice that the fans are familiar with the sport and, and people, you know, who it, it wasn't just that people knew who Elvis Moyer was, you know, who knew, oh, oh, he's a big guy, he's a big puncher. You know, everyone had a little opinion. Oh, you know, you've got to be careful of that big. And it, it was cool that people really took an interest, which I, I really liked. You know, everyone was everyone was so nice about it. You know, even people like, oh, I like Elvis, you know. You know, they weren't, 
that you they had fun with it you know it's oh he's gonna get you or something but not no, <laughs> nothing was malicious you know like no, there's no malice there it was a bit of fun okay which is nice that's good man glad to hear it and and what did you make of of the efc as, as a production oh it was great very very professional um you know, I've I've fought on some of the biggest shows in the world, and you know that's up there with anything I've been. You know, I've experienced. You know, the the whole sort of fight week and fight prep. You know, the the show was great. You know, not just the 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 promotion was good. Um, the the whole you know the team. <clears throat> obviously, like they're sort of a they're, they're like a regular team. It's not a lot of the shows in the UK. What happens? You know, people. You know, when, when they have a show, <clears throat> this guy starts working, that person starts working, that person, because EFC is so consistently putting out such a, you know, a solid product, and they've they've built themselves. You know, you can see that it, everything's working smoothly. You know, you know they know what what's going on. They, if a problem comes up, you know, or if I've not such my problem, but you know, if I've got something I need an issue, yeah. then straight away somebody's on it. They made it like they made it as comfortable and as easy as it could be for them. Good so stuff. It's great. Good stuff. Straight after your win against Elvis, it seemed that Dolce was your immediate next thought. It almost as if the campaigning for that fight started straight away. Was that something that happened organically, or was it always your plan to arrive here, get the fight done with Elvis, and and start the campaign for that light heavyweight belt? Yeah, pretty much. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I've got like quite. Um, pretty clear goals of what I want to do and how I'm going to get there in the sport. Um, like I say, Elvis was a, you know, heavyweight. It wasn't even so much Elvis. It was more like fight, that heavyweight fight was more an intro. I needed to fight. Um, you know, that was the name put in front of me. So I took that fight. Um, so that, and then, you know, move on from that, you know, I, I want to be a light heavyweight. I'm not particularly looking to be a heavyweight. Sure. Um, you know, if, if, certain opportunities come up i might consider them um but like i say i'm i am a heavyweight i'm a, uh, sorry a light heavyweight i'm a big light heavyweight and i'm a you know athletic i'm as big as anyone in the sport um and as strong and fast and you know as well ran as, as an athlete sorry i can't talk no problem, <laughs> as, as anyone as anyone at light heavyweight in the sport and i think that you know suits me best you know some of the the really big heavyweights they're just they're just so big and physical, you know, I'm having to make up for so much, you know, you cannot make a single mistake against them sure. or, you know, like it's, it's really, uh, you know, Locked big problems there, basically. Yeah, yeah pretty <laughs> much. At, at the end of the day, that's, that's how I lo lost to Mark. You know, I made a single mistake um, and he capitalized because he's a, you know, he's a top quality fighter. hundred percent, man. And then just looking at Dolce, this is obviously... This fight has got a lot of fans excited. I mean, it's it's such an exciting fight for, for EFC fans for a lot of reasons. I think that heavy, light heavyweight belt has been neglected for so long and, you know, champions almost got this mystique about him that it seems everyone on the roster is kind of avoiding him or, you know, whether that's true or not, that just seems to be the case. And, and, and finally, we have this contender who's arrived who picked apart Elvis Moyo in, 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 in seriously impressive fashion for my eyes and we're finally going to get to see this fight if you look at champion Dolce wh what do you make of him as a fighter I, I know you said in the, in the build up they made it quite clear like you, you're you not impressed with his fighting style and, and, and things that he does I think they were asking you about his knockout of Alain Bado. Um just in general what, what do you make of him as a fighter well obviously like he's a monster athlete you know yeah. he, you can't question his his athletic ability in terms of being able to you know his power output is crazy apart from that though i i think he has huge holes in his game to be honest i think he relies on his athletic ability so much um i think he's very very good at controlling a fight you know he, he's very measured with his pace he uses his intimidation um, to stop people doing anything. Um, and, you know, that's okay. Um, I think he's very, very measured in his approach to what he's doing. Very calculated. He knows what he's doing the whole time. But I, I think I'm going to be, like, one step ahead. Um, 
to be honest, if people don't want to fight him, then, you know, they're making a choice as to where they want to go in their careers. You know, like, if you don't want to fight the better guys, then cool, you know, get out. You know, that's my mindset. You know, if you don't want to fight tough fights, why are you doing this? If you want to be, you know, if you want to be, I, I don't want to be the king of my local area. You know, if I want to go and fight a bunch of guys, you know, and, and knock over some guy, you know, they're pulled off the street, some bum, whatever, that's cool, that's fine. But I'm not that guy. I want to fight the guy who's had, you know, good fights. He's won impressively. He's, he's you know, he's fought tough guys. That That's what I want to do. I want to go to the top of the sport. I'm not, like, trying to tread water. Um, you know, I'm not... Pe- people are telling me, you know, like, online, people saying, oh, you don't deserve this fight. I'm like, you know, I've already got history in this sport. I've already been fighting professionally for eight years. I've won belts. I've beaten good guys. And... You know, there's a difference between me and some guy who's had two fights coming into the UFC. You know, yeah, there's, a, sure. there's a big difference. I have a, I have a reputation already. Yeah, um, don't, don't listen to know. those trolls, man. They don't know what they're talking oh, about. Oh, uh, no, 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 <laughs> I love it. I love it. Like, that, unfortunately, those are the people who are going to put big money on down to lose it. That's that's the problem for them. <laughs> you know, like, sure. like the odds were crazy in the last fight. The last fight was a four-to-one underdog. That's, that's insane. <laughs> Nobody who knows anything about the sport, like, would, would call me the underdog there. Sure. You know, I had more fights, more experience, more wins, bigger shot. You know, it doesn't make sense. Sure. Um, you know, and right now, Doucher's, you know, he's on a hot streak. He's, he's looked good. He's looked impressive. He's got finishes. Um, you know, and that's the guy I want to be. I don't want to fight some guy on the undercard who's, you know, got five wins and two and, and three losses. You know, what that doesn't do what I want to do. I want to be the, the best guy. You know, I don't want to be... I don't just want to win. I want to be- win against the best, and I want to be the best. You know. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Just staying with with, with Dolce, he's like you, you mentioned something in there which which sparked me was he he intimidates people. You know, he he comes with this massive crowd and he's always doing like strange things. Some guys have even said to me that it, it, sometimes it looks like he's. Uh, almost calling on spirits of his ancestors or whatever crap he does. I don't know. He, like, looks around and goes a bit crazy. Do, do those sort of antics intimidate you? Oh, no. It, it's ridiculous. <laughs> like, the crowd, uh, I've never, ever fought in my hometown. Put it that way. Yeah. Like, I've never fought to a home crowd, really. Uh, maybe once or twice. I've, like, wh- when I was at university, I, I fought in my university town. Pardon me. <clears throat> So a few of my my university towns, so a few of my friends came, but most of the time I've been going into people's backyard. I I've been the guy people boo, you know, like, and that's <laughs> cool. Like it really doesn't matter. I don't care. Like there's nobody on the outside who's going to help you. Like that, sure. That's just <clears throat> it. Just doesn't work that way, you know. People hometown advantage. I I don't see it in his advantage. All his you know like all his mates and people and his friends were putting money on him and. You know, oh, you're gonna get this, 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 this. All talking to him, talking to him. That builds in his own head. Sure. I can just go and have fun, to be honest. That's I, I get to do what I want to do. You know, I get to travel halfway across the world, and you know, go and beat someone up and get paid for it. It's cool. <laughs> Sounds like a good day. Um, just watching your your online activity. There was a post that came out the other day. You, you were working with a high-level judoka. Is that an emphasis in your camp, working and drilling uh, judo to kind of em- like almost counter what you expect to get from Dolce? Obviously, everyone talks about his judo. The way I see judo in MMA is there's a good base for judo in places, but it's never going to win you an MMA fight. But is it something that you are focused on uh, to deal with? Uh, not really, actually. Um, it just so happened that um, we had a, a really good judo guy, um, uh, Tolga, come down the gym um, about the same time as my camp started, and it was just like, well, it just makes sense, yeah. yeah sure. Like that's that's great to have him down there. Let's introduce him, bring him in. He's, um, I think he's competing in the uh, is it the I M M A F yes, Worlds yes. or something? Yes. So yeah, he's he's come to our camp, you know, because we're a top camp with lots of big guys to train with us. Um, but it just fits in nicely with this this whole camp. Uh, my my kind of judo background anyway serves me pretty well, and I've I've got we've had some sambo training partners before, and I've had, you know, like our, our camp 
fight in, uh, in uh, London is known as one of the best wrestling camps in the UK, if not the best. Um, and with my own judo background and, and people I've worked with in the past, my brother and stuff, you know, like I'm, I'm well aware of what he, what he's going to do. I've looked, watched his takedowns, watched what he sets up and, you know, I'm, I, I think I should be okay. okay. This is just a bonus to be honest. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Just want to play a little, little hypothetical question for you. Um, I mentioned earlier and it's, and it's been quite i don't want to say an issue but it's been a bit of a talking point for the efc and mma fans is the light heavyweight division seems to be a little bit thin obviously you're one of the more recent additions we saw tabanium and Debella move down from heavyweight to light heavyweight as well over the weekend um so there's obviously a, a lot of if we can say a new crop of fighters coming through there's alain bordeaux from france uh, warren ellison is on a run there's a couple of couple of new, let's say, fresh blood in the division. Um, if 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 you could try and obviously it's always hard for fighters to to to, to emphasize on these kind of things. But if you w- if you were to win the belt, I know in your mind you when you win the belt, uh, put it like that. Have you given any thought to who you would like to fight next? Uh, I, I want to win someone who's just. W- uh, oh, sorry, I want to win someone. <laughs> <laughs> I want to fight someone who's just won. Um, like I want someone with a decent record, you know, who's who's coming off a good win. Um, so to me, it doesn't matter. I saw um, I saw uh, Warren Allison. He he looked pretty solid. And he he beat a good guy as well, didn't he? Mm, um, Brodsky, yeah. Yeah. So to, I mean, to me, that ma- that fight makes sense. Um, I mean, I don't really know. Like at the end of the day, this is the fight I'm looking at. Um, I'm looking at the best guy in the division right now, and I'm gonna, you know, that's what I want. Hundred percent. Cool, man. Just to taper off there, would you have uh, any last messages for some South African fans? Uh, just come and check out the fight. You know, if you can't come to the fight, then uh, obviously watch it on TV. Um, you know, just enjoy it. It's it's gonna be a, a, an epic one. You know, we're both gonna try and go after it, take each other out. Don't put your money on him. It's just a waste. <laughs> and any last message for the man dem- uh, champion Dolce himself? Ah, oh, work hard, mate. You're gonna need it. Like you know, you need to put the effort in now because I think on the night it's uh, it's gonna be a long one for you. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Check me out on Instagram, Twitter, Stuart Austin MMA. I'm always posting, so have a look. Fantastic. Love or hate, I don't mind. Yeah, see you later. Cheers. Fantastic. Thanks, man. Take it easy. You saw the champion of the light headweight of the EFC tonight, champion Doucher, perform tonight. What did you make of him, and do you fancy a crack at his belt? I wasn't impressed. He was on the ropes, and he swung pretty much with his eyes closed. In all honesty, that's not going to happen against me. Like, if he backs up like that, I'm going to chew him up. It will be an easy fight. On Saturday, the 4th of November, the pride of Africa, champion Dolce defends his light heavyweight title against the might of Britain, Stuart Austin. At the top of the division, there can only be one. EFC 65. For November, Carnival City. Tickets and broadcast information at efcworldwide.com.